Hello, my name is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you an in-depth, step-by-step explanation of how I place my chopper and fago tip during my fago chop technique. This is a schematic of the eye. The pink is the fago tip, and the chopper is in black. As you can see, the fago tip is placed subincisionally within the anterior capsular opening. The, the tip is slid down into the epinuclear material, but outside and around the endonucleus and holding the endonucleus at the same level. The chopper is placed at the same position on the contralateral side. This is the Alcon balance tip. This is a proposition, but I flip it 180 degrees so that it's beveled down. And you can see when it's beveled down, there's actually a little bit of a curvature to the phaco tip. And I use that curvature as the part that actually touches the lens as I fracture it, pushing it forward. This is the proper position of the chopper. When I go into the eye, you want to stay in the pronated position with your wrist, and then you supinate your hand so that the chopper tip is facing you when you initiate the chop. So again, pronation, supination. I like to go in the eye, pronated, and just just to show you, I'm going in with one hand, I'm sliding the chopper in the pronated position down into the epinuclear material underneath the anterior capsule, rotating my hand so that it's supinated now. This is the ready position for the chop maneuver. Just for illustration, I'm going back out, pronated, and then supinated back into the equator, and I'm in the ready position to initiate the chop. The phaco tip, again, it's within the anterior capsular opening, and I dive down into the epinuclear material, but I know that I'm outside of the endonucleus, but at the same level. I'm bringing the two instruments together in the center, and the chop is initiated without difficulty. The cross chop, the same maneuver of pronating and supinating the wrist, and then bringing the chopper into the middle and fracturing. This is another example. Again, I'm in the pronated position, going into the eye, sliding under the epinuclear material, rotating my hand. You see I'm nudging the lens just to prove to you that I am indeed in the equator. Because I'm in the equator, when I do that maneuver, the lens jiggles, the lens moves in within the horizontal plane. If I'm on top of the lens, as I'm showing here, when I try to supinate my hand, all it does is cause the lens to tiddlywink, and it doesn't actually move horizontally. Again, I'm pronated my hand. I went out underneath the anterior capsule to the equator, and then I supinated. I'm going to do that again. After I clean up this epinuclear material with the phaco, again, pronated, slide it past the anterior capsule, supinated the chopper tip again within the anterior capsule opening, bevel down into the epinuclear material, but outside of the endonucleus, gliding the two pieces together, fracturing the endonucleus within that same horizontal plane. And again, just to reiterate, I am always beveled down with my phaco tip, and you can see there's an angle to this uh, balanced uh, tip that allows me to hold the endonucleus. This is tripan blue stained eye for illustrative purposes. Again, I pronate and, and then glide underneath the anterior capsule and then supinate. You can clearly see, because there's such a well dilated pupil, that I am in the equator. I'm lifting the anterior capsular edge just to show you, and I slid my chopper underneath it. Again, I'm pronating and supinating just to show you how easy and fluid the movements are. Again, I pronated to get under the anterior capsule out to the equator, supinated my hand for the ready position. The chopper is sub incisional doing the same thing, they meet in the middle and fracture the endonucleus in half. The pronation and supination move is the same for the cross chop. And so this is a final illustration just to show that, hey, you don't have to see what you're doing because you know where you are. So again, push down the epinuclear material, get under the anterior capsule, glide out to the equator, supinate and you're in position. You saw me nudge the lens just to show you that I am 
indeed in the equator, because as I nudge, the lens moves within the horizontal plane. If I was not in the proper position, the lens would be tilting or I would just simply be scratching the surface. So in summary, the chop maneuver involves keeping the wrist pronated so that the chopper tip is facing out into the periphery, push down a little bit into the epinuclear material and as you on the surface of the lens and as you slide out past the anterior capsule, you supinate your wrist so that the, the chopper then faces the phaco tip and this is the ready position to initiate the chop. You place the phaco tip bevel down underneath subincisionally into the epinuclear material but again outside the level of the endonucleus you bring the two instruments together and you chop. The pronation and supination move to harness the lens at the level of the equator and bringing the chopper centrally meeting the phaco tip in the middle and fracturing purely mechanically without any energy or vacuum is my fundamental technique. The only variation is on the initial step when you have to place that phaco tip sub-incisionally. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for your attention.